So welcome, Juliet Slotnick uh, from Elliot and uh, Jackie Benavides from Elliot, two educators uh, who are joining me today to talk about your work at the uh, John Elliot School. Mm -hmm. Juliet, Share your role at, uh, at Elliot. Uh, so right now I'm teaching kindergarten since it went full day. Uh, before that, I was an instructional coach uh, yeah. and a literacy specialist. And Jackie, your first year in Needham, tell us what you're doing. Yes. I am a math and literacy coach. Okay. Well, um, today what, what uh, I wanted us to share with the community and with our staff is a little bit about instructional coaching, what it's all about, what you do, what the role is, and I'm wondering maybe, Jackie, if we can explain, you know, maybe start with you. What, what is an instructional coach? What's the role? I work directly with teachers in one-on-one -on -one coaching cycles. I will work with grade level teams on like a common shared goal. Um, I work directly with students as an interventionist. So I'm a little bit everywhere all the time and I, I'm loving it. Um, specifically in my work with teachers, we will set goals. Teachers will tell me, here's an area that I'd like to improve or here's something I'd like to put a little extra focus on and then we'll do like a six-week cycle that will include classroom observations, co-teaching, maybe the coach lead teaching, um, and then weekly kind of check-ins to measure our progress. And is it unusual to have someone who's doing math and literacy? I am the only coach in the district who is in both departments. So how, how, so how did that come about? Um, it happened to do with funding at Elliott um, and in my background as an upper elementary teacher and instructional leader, um, I really love math and I really love literacy. So the fact that this position existed at, in a wonderful district at a time that I was looking um, just felt really lucky and my days are really full with all of the things that I love. Well, and it, it, all, it all came together. And I would imagine, Juliet, for a teacher to have a person that you kind of, you know, connect with and literacy and math is, is, uh, is kind of neat. Can you maybe describe, Juliet, how do both of you work together? What is what, is what um, Jackie just shared with us, what does that look like in the classroom for you? Okay. So uh, we've actually have, she hasn't worked with us in literacy with kindergarten, but she uh, came to work with us uh, maybe January or so. Um, with our grade level team for our weekly collaboration meetings as because we have a new math curriculum this year that everyone has been working hard to learn um, and implement and we were struggling a little bit because um, you know it's meant for 60 minute lessons that's a slideshow and how do you get that down to a shorter time and for kids who don't read and you know present it in a kid friendly kindergarten friendly manner um, so we asked her to come and, and kind of work through those lessons with us, um, and she did. And then from there, I, I personally wanted to try some other things that were, it was just not working for me, and I really needed more help. And so I asked Jackie if we could do another individual coaching cycle on the side. She's still meeting with our team weekly, but we also have something else where we're kind of I wanted to get some systems in place for my own classroom and procedures and, and just kind of. Well, so what's an example? So you're working, so, so Jackie's working with the team and, mm -hmm. and working with yeah. everyone together, problem solving, talking about data. Right. But you wanted something, you know, on the side, something yeah. individual. What's an example of, of a system or a procedure that you wanted some, some advice coaching about? So I, I, this year I had a really hard time kind of getting a handle on it and I was really getting uh, it's supposed to be a 60 minute lesson. I usually 60 have minute math lesson. Math lesson. Okay. And I usually have about 30 minutes. And you know, they're, they're, they can't, they're five and six. They can't do a 60 minute math lesson. Um, and we don't have that time in the day with everything else. So it was just not feeling good what I was doing. Nothing felt right. Um, I, I was cutting things out, but I didn't, wasn't sure if I was cutting the right stuff out. Um, so I needed a way to like, take a 60 minute lesson and turn it into a 30 minute lesson with fewer transitions. Um, and so I said, will you help me? And she said, yes. And I said, I hate math. <laughs> I hate teaching math this year. I don't usually, but this is just, I've tried many different things and none of them have worked. Um, and because I wasn't enjoying teaching math, the kids weren't enjoying math right. as well. They're like, oh, math. So, <laughs> and, and she said, I promise we can work together and you will like math, you will like I am, and the kids will like math. And after like 
12 weeks, I think now. She was right. Have you, you've figured out a pacing we and a have, way to, to really make those lessons mm -hmm. come alive for yeah. kids. We figured out what to, what's important to keep from the slides. Mm -hmm. We figured out uh, how many transitions the kids could handle realistically right. in that time block um, and and how to and the seating on the rug when they're working with math partners just lots of logistics um, so now it feels and now we're in a routine it's much more comfortable for me do you feel more confident in teaching math now that you've been working with Jackie yes absolutely um, I was never I mean I've taught math yeah uh, so it wasn't the material right as much as how to make it manageable, how to make it feel like they were actually getting practice and getting the number of like hits on certain skills that they needed to get right. in a session. Um, well, I, you know, Julia, you are an example of the, your colleagues, very skilled teacher with great experience. And here is this new curriculum that requires a certain amount of time that you don't have. And so for you both to collaborate together to figure out how you can have this be meaningful for students mm -hmm. is, the, is the idea. Right. Left on your own, you'd be, be, you'd be struggling with it. Um, and so it's great to have the, the resources of, uh, of uh, Jackie and of course your colleagues throughout the district. Um, how, how, how has that partnership developed with Juliet and, and her colleagues? How, how, does that, uh, how do you manage it during the course of a, a week to be there, here, there? Mm -hmm. and So I believe that really at its core, um, instructional coaching is so much about trust and building relationships um, and the coach honoring the teachers, um, listening to teachers, hearing teachers, and then taking that information and deciding, okay, how do we move forward together? Um, a beautiful thing about coaching, in my opinion, is that it's not evaluative. So um, I, I think even so, it can feel sometimes uncomfortable with someone else coming into your classroom. I've been a classroom teacher for a long time. I know that I understand that hesitation. Um, but me kind of proving myself and, and practicing what I preach in terms of um, I'm here to provide any support, to work together, to collaborate, um, I think is really core. And so with Juliet, I, again, like listening to Juliet, sitting in on these weekly team meetings, um, us brainstorming together, me making the time to get into classrooms, also to learn the kids, because even among our three different kindergarten classes right now, it's three different cohorts. Different personalities mm -hmm, in the classroom. Very much yeah. so. Um, and so that really plays into you know, what are our next steps going to be? Or how might this lesson or this game or center look different in this classroom than in this classroom? Or I watched it um, implemented this way on Tuesday. So when you do it on Wednesday, here are some tips that I noticed from your colleague. Um, and I, I, something I hear from teachers so much is we just want to get into each other's classrooms. We want to see each other. And I know that as a coaching department, both math and literacy, we are working toward that goal of coordinating so that teachers can get into each other's rooms. And in the meantime, lucky for me, I get to be eyes in multiple places and kind of pass along some of that wisdom that I'm only observing from other talented teachers. Right, right. So, Juliet, what do you say to a reluctant colleague? Um, not necessarily, it could be kindergarten, first grade, second grade. What do you say about, look at this, you should really, yeah. really engage with, with, with Jackie. So one of the things, it, it is about relationships and building trust. And, and she earned my trust in certain ways because I said, after six weeks, I said, don't leave me. I'll do this if you don't just leave me after six weeks. And she said, okay, we can oh, do Oh, to move on to something else or right. someone else. Who right. Doesn't. And she said, okay. okay, we can do another cycle together. And I said, okay, then I will dive into this and try to, t we'll tackle this together. And I really appreciate that she spent the time to come into my classroom and try a lesson. Because in the beginning, I'd be like, she has upper elementary and middle school experience. And I said, that's not going to work for kindergartners. And she's like, I said, okay. But she's like, let me try it. I'm like, okay, try it. And she would try it. And, and then because she was willing to take that risk and try things and say, and say, okay, so this didn't work, but I think this did. So, so Jackie doesn't, or the, the instruction coach doesn't necessarily have all the answers no. or all the experience. No it's way. working with mm -hmm. right. your, your colleague that together you can, you can, you know, solve the problem practice that right. that's eluding you. So I think for the reluctance, I think there are different reasons why people might be reluctant. And I think one of the things might be just time and effort. 
but the coach is not really there to tell you to do anything additional. They're just there to help you do what you need to do anyway um, and make your job easier and help you do it better. And ultimately to assist our students yes. to be able to wrestle with those math questions, yes. to be able to struggle over some, some words and reading and literacy, exactly. to, to make their learning richer and deeper and, and more meaningful and powerful. Well, as we conclude, I, you know, a couple of words that both of you have said that I just want to repeat, that the instructional coaching uh, work that we're trying to do in, in all of our elementary schools involves support, collaboration, and it's built on a relationship that's developed, it's built on trust, and it's built on a sense of real deep listening to one another. That's what's going to make an, a, a successful instructional coaching teacher um, working relationship. Jackie and Julia, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good luck with the rest of the year. Thanks. Thanks.